hey there in front of the screens. So I was thinking, what should I do for my YouTube subscribers this week? And I was thinking, should I do some mail time? But then I was like, I'm really not sure if they're interested in seeing me unpacking boxes of outdoor gear. And then I had an idea. So photography is always changing, but at the same time, it is very, very easy to get stuck in same routine and always take the same pictures. So I want to help you today to try something new. And if something new is very affordable. You can do it anywhere, wherever you live. If you live in a city, you can do it there. If you live in a country, you can do it there. You can do it in nature, on the beach, in the mountains, wherever. A uh, couple of uh, safety things to keep in mind, but you will see about that. It's also pretty cheap because everything you need is a whisk and some steel wool, which over here cost around 15 euros, which isn't too bad. And what's very convenient for the working people is that you need to do this at night because you're going to be light painting with these two ingredients. So first I'll show you how to get these things ready for light painting and then we'll go outside and do some steel wool light circles and take some photos of that. So for starters you need your whisk. I bought this new and you need some cord. I had still some cord as for camping and I'm going to use that. You need around 50 to 1 meter of this. And then you just connect the cord to the whisk. Take a, make a good knot in there, something that will hold when you're swinging this around very strongly. If you want, you can make at the other end also a little loop that you can hold in your hand so it cannot fly away. That makes it a little bit more secure. And considering we're working here with something that is burning that is a good idea to do that. Steel wool is obviously made out of steel, so it's not very easy to just uh, rip apart. So we will need some scissors. And you need to experiment. It all depends on the size of the whisk that you're having. And then you need to squeeze it in here. It needs to be loose in there, but it shouldn't be like stuffed either so this looks pretty good and you need to have a lighter and with a lighter you will be lighting up the steel wool later outside to get it started so before you head out it's important to consider that you wear something preferably all in black and preferably that is made out of a material that's not very easily flammable you're working here with something that shoots off sparks and these sparks don't extinguish right away. So you need to be really careful. So maybe don't take the super fluffy uh, fleece jacket or something very synthetic that is easily flammable, but maybe something from a durable cotton or something like that, that is uh, hard to light on fire. Right now it's a little bit too light outside still, so I need to wait for a moment. So that's also a good time to get your camera gear ready. If you're shooting this on your own, and I imagine many of you are, you will need to have something with that you can trigger the camera from the distance and maybe even hold the exposure. So I have a quite affordable 30 euros uh, remote. Uh, it's linked in the description. It works perfectly with the Sony a7 III or the Sony a6500 and it uh, has a bulb option so you can just keep your finger on top of it and have an exposure of 30 or more seconds so that's quite a, a good setting. Yeah otherwise take your whisk with the steel wool and the uh, cord on it, take some more steel wool and scissors to cut it loose and don't forget your lighter. Then you obviously also need a tripod for your camera and yeah just take all your gear, get ready, wait till it's dark and then let's make some light circles. All right, I am outside. I've got my whisk with the uh, steel wool in there. And uh, now I have the camera set up over here. I'm first going to shoot a 30 second exposure at f2.3 at ISO 100 to see what kind of results I get out of that. And after that, I can evaluate if I go for bulb 
and longer exposures or can go even shorter and if I need to be closer or further away. So one thing that is really important if you do these kind of things is that you only can do them in an area where there's no chance of a fire. So I'm over here in the forest but everything is still wet from the snow and the rain we had and there's rain forecasts so I'm not concerned about starting a forest fire over here. If you're trying to do this in an area that has been very dry I recommend you go for a place that is really safe something like a beach where there's a lot of sand and nothing can really go on fire or on some parking lot where there's a lot of empty space and you can't put anything on fire so keep these things in mind especially if you do this for the first time and that you don't have any bad surprises all right i'm now going to get in place and then we'll see how this will turn out in the first test That were a couple of nice images. I now changed the spot to get another perspective. Something that's a little bit more open over here. Still everything is uh, pretty wet over here. Actually there's a little creek behind me. So quite a good location, it's quite safe. And yeah, let's, let's try and get a couple of uh, different looking shots from here now. As you saw that was pretty easy and a lot of fun. I do recommend you take a big lighter with a big flame and that you pull out the steel wool a little bit so that it is easier to lighten it up and then you just need to be quick to push the button on your remote to get the images. So I am really happy with the results of this night. It's time again to go home. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you found it useful and learned something new, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more photography and outdoor videos from me. Goodbye.